Hello world and welcome to Elevated Intuition. Today we are doing a pick card reading and our question is, can you trust them? So I'm not going to inherently make this a, um, a love reading, a, a crush reading like that. Um, however, of course, you know, you, those are people that you want to know if you can trust. Uh, but this could be whoever's on your mind. So can you trust them? The them being whoever is on your mind. Is it, is it somebody you'd like to have a relationship with or somebody online that you're speaking to or um, a coworker or somebody you work with, a boss, a family member? Whoever that is on your mind, can you trust them? That is the question. In a picket card reading, you get to pick the card, the number, the object, the deck, um, maybe it's a number sequence down below in the description that calls to you. You use your intuition. You engage your intuition to pick it. Then again, the timestamps are down below in the description. You go to your corresponding timestamp, click on that. It'll take you to your reading and then I will use my intuition to read the cards for you. Shuffle on camera, the cards come out and we are going to go through like five questions about trust and them and who they are and who you are and your relationship with them and um, further advice, things like that. Um, objects. So if you want to choose with objects, I'll place them right now. I'll let you know a little bit about the deck. This deck number one is kind of a fairy tales deck, a fairy tales and folklore. And um, not only will I be talking about the tarot meaning behind the cards, but also the um, folklore meaning behind it in this particular deck and the object that goes with it is this um, swirly druzy heart it's got tiny little crystals on it for group number two this is probably our most traditional deck but pretty kind of feminine um, it does have silver gilding on it and for group number two the the um, object that goes with it is this uh, moss agate star for group number three, this is a very, you can see how it's like geometric shapes, but it's geometric shapes and watercolor, um, a very nice deck. It's, the artist does a lot of Celtic stuff. I'm not sure. I think, yeah, there is. There's a lot of Celtic um, influence in the deck as well, um, Celtic artwork influence. And for that, we have another Druzy heart, a little bit different um, than the first one. And for group number four, this deck is pandas. This is uh, the way of the panda. A, and the object for it is a Druzy star. So we've got hearts and stars here today. If you're still not sure which group is the one for you, I'm gonna do a breathing exercise. You're invited to do it with me. In fact, if you have a hard time picking, I highly suggest doing this. So just go ahead and close your eyes and just take a very comfortable posture wherever you are. Feel rooted, feel grounded, take a deep breath in and release. Okay, so we're going to be here in the moment. Um, set the intention that you get the messages that you need to receive. So set that intention. Not that necessarily what you want, but what you need. Take another deep breath in and release. Okay, go ahead and open your eyes and wherever your eyes are drawn, that is the group for you. Thank you so much for being here with me today. I appreciate it. I appreciate you. Love your energy. Um, thanks for joining me and I will see what you're reading. Hello, group one. So here's our fairy tale deck, folklore deck, um, with this fun, druzy, swirly, heart number one and we're going to ask can you trust them so i'm going to get five cards out each card with a different question around the theme of trust in this relationship and i'm going to go ahead and get the cards out first and then we'll talk about uh, how they all work together and the meaning together so first card is what is the foundation of your relationship foundation and we get the eight of swords what is this person's true intentions we get the Knight of Cups. Um, why are you questioning them? Why are you questioning this? We get the Eight of Cups. Interesting that it came out in reverse. It's not supposed to. Um, 
okay? What would happen if you begin to build trust? Do I have this? Okay. And then um, what is the potential? Potential. King of coins and seven of cups. <clears throat> so there is a lot of uncertainty here around this connection. Let's see if I can get all these cards in here. Okay. Um, we've got the Eight of Swords. Eight of Swords tells the story of you feeling like lost and lonely, um, isolated. You could have created this connection because you're you're lonely or you're lost and fall, fallen for their charisma here with the Knight of um, Cups. Um, Eight of Cups, this is, why are you questioning this relationship? Because you see them leaving. The Knight of Cups is somebody who is very charismatic, very um, open, very uh, Don Juan-ish, I will say. And then the Eight of Cups is then walking away from the situation. So you see either this doesn't feel like a lasting connection and you see either them or you walking away. Maybe you feel like you would walk away first before they do that type of thing. So that's the first three cards that we have. And then what would happen if you begin to trust them? Um, we've got some some interesting things going on because if you begin to trust them, we get the two of coins and we get the six of wands. Um, first of all, I feel like you need to, two of coins is about balance. You need to figure out how to balance out this feeling of um, loss with with um, trying to, to create a feeling of connection. So there is, there's that. So you need to figure out how to balance that, how to balance this person and the rest of your life, how to balance maybe this person being flirty and and the rest and, and who you are and maybe your trust issues. I mean, if you have trust issues and you're with a very flirty type person, that can cause some problems. The six of wands though, this is a moment of victory. This is standing out. This is feeling good. This is taking that victory lap. So that would what is what would happen. And then the king of coins over here is what is the potential for the future of this relationship. Um, if this is a relationship for uh, a job, it looks very good and very promising, that, um, that very fruitful. If you can figure out how to work together, kind of like over here in the two of coins, that the two of you could create a very fruitful partnership with the king of coins. And then the seven of cups is, it it is good for you. Like um, the seven of cups is kind of, um, there's a lot of possibilities, a lot of things open to you. Sometimes it feels like there's, sometimes the seven of cups, <laughs> it's funny that this is a genie lamp, right? Because we always think that we want all of those wishes, but um, sometimes, you know, it's kind of like be careful what you wish for or that you get more than you think that you do. And it's kind of difficult. Okay, now I can, I'm going to dive into the portion of this that is um, the, the fairy tales. So um, overall, from just the tarot portion of this, it looks like if you can get over your feeling of loss and resentment and the, that this, <clears throat> this person seems kind of like a Don Juan and a love them and leave them type of person and they don't necessarily seem that serious if we can get over that because I think most of that is how like you're afraid that they're going to leave you're afraid that you're going to leave um, a lot of that is very fear-based on your part if you can get over that um, and work on yourself and work on this balance and I, everything else looks really really good okay um, from the fairy tale perspective and what these cards are so this is the fun part this is a French folklore French fairy tale, it's called Donkey Skin. The Eight of Swords represents being caught up in your own insecurities. Donkey Skin was forced into hiding to escape a bad situation. She now is faced with the decision to continue the life that she has created or to step out of her self-made prison. So this is anxiety, victimhood, feeling trapped, paralysis because you don't know where to go, where to move. 
And I can see that where we would need that balance between the two of these energies where your person feels like they're moving all over the place and you who feels like you're stuck, like this might just be the right person um, to move you out of your comfort zone. We get the Knight of Cups over here. This is Halibu the Hunter. This is a Mongolian legend. The Knight of Cups is a messenger. Halibu is a kind and gentle while also willing to take a stand for what he believes in. Halibu provides for his village after befriending a dragon. He willingly sacrifices himself to save everyone. So this um, particular fairy tale is a little bit different. Uh, he does it out of love. Um, in tarot, the way I read knights is that they are moving and they and when you're stuck and you're they're moving, um, this is where we create this kind of need for, to figure out how to move together, figure out how to trust his movement or um, her movement versus your your stagnation. So chivalry, affection, invitations, taking action. I do feel like taking action would be something that would be helpful for you. And then we've got the Eight of Cups here. Like I said, this is somebody moving away. This is actually the legend of Moses, a Hebrew legend out of Egypt. The Eight of Cups represents leaving good things behind in pursuit of higher ideals. So even though you have these really good things, maybe it's security, maybe it's like your parents' house and you're leaving it behind because it's it's a new chapter in your life. So these cups are great things, but they, they are not fulfilling to you anymore or you've outgrown them. Moving, leaving these good things behind in pursuit of higher ideals, which is kind of what Moses did. Moses was raised as a prince of Egypt, but he realizes he needed to sacrifice his royal life and wealth to pursue a spiritual and a... Um, a spiritual life. So walking away, introspection, uh, escapism, withdrawal, and seeking the truth. And then we come over here to our two of coins and our six of wands. We'll talk about two of coins first. This is uh, from the Pacific Northwest. Rapisant? Um, Rapisant? The two of coins represents the skill needed to balance opposing forces. So we've got these two opposing forces this would be you and your person. That's why you have a heart, you know, you're kind of worried about trusting them and balancing these opposing forces. For uh, Rapusant, the bear world and the human world collide. She embodies the duality of work and family, hobbies and career, and wants to uh, wants versus needs. So this is finding that balance, that multitasking, those bringing of kind of like those two worlds together. Then we've got the Six of Wands. I told you this is kind of like standing out in victory. This is a, um, a Masi legend. The Six of Wands represents victory and success. A warrior princess, Yenenenga, is her father's most prized fighter. Her skill is so great he never wishes to part with her, but she rebels. She seeks her own path and recognition for her deeds. So it's about victory, uh, praise, achievement, reward, and fame. So I'm loving what I'm seeing about you coming out of your shell, finding yourself, finding that balance, and then finding that victory. Um, if you can start to trust this person. I feel like this is the kind of person that kind of that can bring you out of your shell. Then we've got the king of coins over here in this um, very Pokemon looking turtle. If you know, you know. Uh, and this is what is the potential in the future here. And like I said, the king of coins is, is it's a wonderful card, a beautiful card. This one is from Iroquois mythology. The king of coins represents stability and faithfulness. The turtle, the world turtle, is strong enough to support the weight of others' hopes and dreams. He may not be act, an active participant in their lives, but he is always dependable, slow, and steady. This is success, dependability, conservatism, strong will, willing to work. 
And um, so yeah, this is not going to be easy. It's going to take some work to put into this, but um, you know, anything worth having is going to be some work, right? And then we've got the Seven of Cups over here. This is Aladdin or Aladdin, depending on how you pronounce it. Most people say Aladdin from Disney, but I was told that's wrong and it's Aladdin. You tell me. Uh, the Seven of Cups shows um, Aladdin standing before a myriad of fantastical dreams, like all of your dreams coming true, but it's impossible for him to pursue them all. And that's the problem with dreams, or that's the problem with getting what you wish for. If you wish for all of these opportunities, they fall in your lap and you need to have some sort of focus. So that's what's, I love that it's paired here though with the King of Coins, because the King of Coins can add that focus to it. Um, so we're going to go back to Aladdin. It's impossible for him to pursue them all, and it's important that he makes a, dis a, a wise decision. And I feel like when we talk about genies and those wishes, that being wise in our decisions is, um, is always rewarded. So this is daydreaming, fantasy, decisions, wishful thinking, and it can be procrastination because as soon as you start to focus on something, and procrastination kind of brings us back to this first card here, as soon as you start to focus on something, um, the fantasy of the other things kind of disappears and it's not as like cool or interesting anymore. But you, with these two cards here, the Six of Wands and the Knight of Cups, it's time to take action. So that's what I have for you, Group One. I hope that you have an amazing day. Thanks so much for being here with me and I will see you in the next reading. Hello, Group Two. We have our Moss Agate, and let's talk about can we trust this person? So, we're going to ask five questions of this deck all around the theme of can you trust them? I'm going to throw out the question, pull a card um, until we get five out here, and then we'll read everything together, okay? So, question number one is what is the foundation of this relationship? Foundation of your relationship, we get the King of Pentacles reversed. What is this person's true intentions? What is this true intentions? So we get the two of pentacles. Um, why are you questioning? Why are you questioning things with them? And we get the nine of wands. So things are not as easy or as wistful as what they're presenting it to be. Um, what would happen if you begin to build trust? We get the Six of Wands. That's interesting because that's one of the cards that came out. Actually, two came out for Group 1 and one of them was the Six of Wands. And then what is the potential or the future of this relationship? Potential future of this relationship, we get the King of Swords reversed. So we've got two Kings reversed that tells me that things are a little bit out of control. Um, whether you think that's out of control for you or um, maybe that just this is this person causing this this thing to be out of control or just life events it's really um, beating you up and you're really concerned about it you're not certain that this person can add you on to, to all of to all of it what's going on is is what I'm seeing this person seems to kind of have the two of Pentacles can be kind of overwhelming um, we get the key. oh I'm sorry that is the Knight of Pentacles reversed um, so the the Knight of Pentacles still it seems like it's out of control because the Knight of Pentacles is somebody who's very very much in control um, two things come to mind. The Knight of Pentacles works very, very slowly. He is the slowest moving knight in the deck. Knights are about movement, but knights, he's like the slow and steady wins the race. Um, he trusts himself. So when we have this in reverse, we have kind of like a, you know, either you're not willing to put in the work or you've put in the put in some work and you're not, you're just not seeing results. Um, you're not trusting those results. Um, and then when we have him in, you know, things, you're not trusting the results, impatience comes to mind. 
uh, irresponsibility and anxiety. Anxiety is kind of mirrored over here in the night, nine of wands as well. You feel really defensive around this person. Now, it may not be entirely their fault when we get the two of coins because the two of coins kind of like they may be able to handle things or they may think that they have a handle of, of things but i feel like your idea of handling things is different from their idea of handling things i feel like or vice versa i think you have like a mismatch of um of uh A mismatch of ideas, a mismatch of values. Okay, um, this if this is a love, a potential love reading, uh, this person may be juggling other people. They may be juggling their work, their social life, and you. They're juggling. They've got a lot on their plate. They've got a lot of going on. They need some balance. Usually, when this comes up, I like to think that. Or I'd like to tell you that, you know, you're not given more than you can handle. You just need to figure out a way. But when we're dealing with two people and we've got cards like the Knight of Pentacles reversed and we've got the Nine of Wands here, I'm worried about that. And I think you are worried about that too. I think that worry is coming from you, not only from you about them, but uh, it's also coming from the cards about them. Nine of Wands. So Nine of Wands, you're just tired. You're tired of hearing excuses. You know, this juggling thing, if this is like somebody that you're working with, they're like, yeah, yeah, I'll handle it. And then they don't. And then they blame you. <laughs> or they maybe they even have the best of intentions on trying to handle it. But you're like, you know what? I am done hearing these excuses. I am done feeling like, like, I just don't have the strength anymore. Um, I feel like this is you feeling like you are need to protect yourself. This is feeling like you need to have boundaries and probably with good reason because this this person seems like they, they get distracted easily and they're doing other other things. Now, we do have the Six of Wands here on what would happen if you begin to trust them. So I have a question for you. Have you trusted them at all? Do they just look like they're going to cause you anxiety? Have you given them any, any trust at all? Because the Six of Wands is a victory card. The Six of Wands is like standing out. So if this is your group presentation, um, and I get it, like, you know, you want to make sure your grade, you get a good grade on that. But um, this is, this is a victory card. So I would suggest that if this is a relationship where you can't walk away from, like if I'm telling you, yeah, you're getting anxiety, you're getting tired, they drag you down, they're an energy vampire, and you're saying yes, 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 um, and I feel like I want to walk away from them, perfect. This is, this is your, your um, sign that you, your peace of mind is more important than having to deal with their garbage, okay? Um, if you're like, well, you know, I don't know if I've even given them a shot. The victory card, because the victory card is kind of like, um, you know, trust your instincts here. If you're you're done with their garbage, um, whatever decision you make is going to be the right decision for you. This is you walking away with your head held high and in victory. Um, the whole potential of this relationship, though, when we get the King of Swords reversed, I mean, this... They're, the King of Swords reversed. The King of, can be very cruel. Um, swords is ideas, thoughts, words. They can be very cutting. They're kind of like a dictator, somebody who maybe takes over control of something. We all have those bad leaders who they want to micromanage things, but they don't even have time to do what's on their plate, let alone what's on your plate, so then you don't have um, any direction. Uh, so what I would say is, you, you know, if this is your boss, then yeah, you need to start making some decisions for yourself and trust yourself. You're going to come out looking good on top of that, even if you have some disagreements with this person. This, however, I think this person 
it can be very oppressive and very kind of cruel. So long term, this is not going to work out for you, especially if you're feeling tired already. So that's what I have for you, group two. Um, I hope this answered some questions for you, and uh, please let me know how you were doing. I want you to do well. Again, I, I just feel like there's, it's interesting because this is you, and this is this person here. I feel like there's a lot of, there's a lot of opportunity for you to learn and to grow, and I think coming out of the situation, even though I said, you know, this is what happens when you begin to trust them. I think it's more about what happens when you begin to trust yourself and your own instincts and come back to yourself because this person kind of seems like a nightmare to be honest. So that's what I have for you group two. I hope you have a great day. Thanks so much for being here with me and I will see you in the next reading. Hello group three. So we have this other druzy heart. This one has kind of cavernous crystals. Always checking with my camera here on the focus. Um, and then it, it's agate is the stone. And then number three, can you trust them? That's the overall question. We're going to ask five questions. It's a five spread. I will put those questions down below in the description box so you know what they are. If you want to pull your own cards or if you're for reference later, or whatever. Um, I'm going to pull a card for each question, at least one card, and then we'll read the whole thing together. How about that? So for our first question is, what is the foundation? What is the foundation of this relationship? And we get the moon. Look at that. Dog, wolf, howling at the moon. Um, what is this person's true intentions? What are their true intentions? Cards have a lot to say. We have the hermit. We've got um, eight of wands reversed. And then we've got judgment. So I think this is somebody who, I can kind of see why you're asking this, but the next um, uh, card is going to be, why are you questioning them? Yeah, we've got the fool reversed. And then um, what would happen if you begin to trust them? And we get uh, ace of cups reversed. And then... What is the potential? What is the future of this relationship? What's the future? Oh, no, nope. too many cards, too many cards. Let me just shuffle real quick. All right, what is the future of this relationship? That's what we want. One crisp card flowing out there. Okay, I think that your person is kind of making it hard for you because you don't even know what the foundation is. Um, when we get the moon, the foundation is basically what you want to make of it, but it, it is following your intuition because things aren't fully bright for you. We get the hermit over here for your person. What are their intentions? They've got a lot of things swirling around inside of them and they are not telling you. The hermit is kind of a solitary person. So they may be somebody who likes to work on their own or who's used to working on their own. They only trust themselves. They kind of keep to themselves, introverted type person. But we also have judgment and we also have the eight of wands. Eight of wands is about moving quickly, but it's in reverse. So we're going to move slow, slow and steady wins the race here and putting out the intention of what you want out of this relationship and following it through, believing in yourself, following that calling um, with judgment. I feel like your person um, has some like, they have some very, um, they've got some really strong beliefs, but they may not be telling you what those are. And it's really kind of hard when you're guessing at that. They're not the most chatty type person. I also find it really interesting when we have the hermit, the hermit is following like their own, their own way, their own path. And then we've got the moon. So they're the hermit. They're solitary. They're not telling you much. They're introverted. And then you're over here like, okay, but where does that leave us? Where is our path? So when they're very closed lipped about where their path is, it's kind of very hard for you to figure out your path with them is what I'm saying. But they're just, they're just a very like strong, silent type person. Um, and they've got some very, again, some very strong beliefs. You might have to spend some time 
talking to them, uncovering things, um, telling them, well, I feel like this means this, or I feel like we should do this, or we should move this way. Um, I, I feel like, you know, you like this, or you like you might have to ask them some leading questions <laughs> to kind of discover some things. The moon, very intuitive. Um, when you think about day and night and moonlight, right? Everything seems kind of darker. Uh, well, obviously, because it is darker, but I mean, everything seems more uh, formidable. Everything seems more challenging um, in the moonlight versus the daylight because we just cannot see as clearly and your person isn't really helping you out. So I totally get why you're asking if you can trust them. The other thing here, we've got the fool in reverse. Um, the fool is somebody who's willing to just jump in, super o overly excited about things, is, wants to start new things, is ready and rearing to go, but we have it in reverse because your person is not a fool, they're the hermit, but they're very close, they're, they keep their values close to the vest, like they're not opening up and telling you about that. That gets old though. And we get then the Ace of Cups. I feel like if you want to start something with them, it's going to be kind of, it's going to be kind of difficult. It's going to be kind of like pulling teeth. However, that, and that's what the Ace of Cups, like new things, new beginnings, difficult. They're hard because they're hard for this person, not necessarily because they're hard for you. They might be hard for you too, but um, what's really coming in is like this person is just so like in their own world, so solitary. They might even be kind of like, um, uh, a very kind of creative, mad, you know, you don't un quite understand their madness kind of thinker. I'm getting Aquarius vibes here. If you've ever talked to an Aquarius, they're kind of they're kind of weird. Um, <laughs> they they are like they have this very offbeat thinking. Like, oh really? They're very they're fun for me. I love Aquarius. I love talking to Aquarius because they've got some really interesting ideas, but pulling things out of them, and it may be that they don't quite fully trust you too. So it's kind of like a two-way street. Um, moon card is so important. It's kind of like you make of it what you want to make of it. If you believe that they're going to be difficult to deal with and you don't want to handle it, that's what's going to happen. If you believe it's going to be worth it to deal with them and figure things out, that's what's going to happen, okay? So we've got a lot of, we do have a lot of potential here. It's just like break those icebreakers, breaking down the wall. That's the hard part. That's the trust. And that's why I think it's hard for you to figure out if you can trust them because it's hard for them to figure out if they can trust you. So if you want to trust them, you have to be somebody who's trustworthy. Then we've got the, what is this? This is this. When, <laughs> these are hard for me to you know, Roman numerals are hard anyway, but when they're upside down, that's even harder for me. So we've got the Six of Swords. Six of Swords is kind of coming out on the other side, but there's movement here. So I kind of feel like with this is, again, it just, everything comes back to the moon. Like these are the two major arcana, well, three, ma four, wow, we've got some four major arcana cards here. And I just am feeling then that the ace is blocked and then this um the swords is blocked because look they're moving together they're going together at this at the same space but the, um swords is about ideas thoughts things being conveyed and spoken about there's a very emotional component here i think we need to get um your emotions under control i think it's uh with this it's more of a it's not you it's them kind of vibe the emotional component like i can see why you would feel like they don't like me they don't they don't you know whatever you're concerned about it your your emotions are running wild because they are just really they're they're very closed off i do see that can change though it's just going to be about persistence it's just going to be about like i said with those like leading with your intuition sometimes we get to somebody and you're like you know i shouldn't say this you want to say something but you're you're like Ideally, I wouldn't say that, but my intuition is bringing this question up or this topic up. <clears throat> Follow that. Um, if Because <laughs> I get that all the time. I'm in the grocery store and I, oh, I should tell this person this. And 
it's weird, you know, because it's like, well, social norms would dictate I don't, but when I, I never disappointed when I do. So follow your intuition when you when you speak to this person. I feel like there's um, there's a lot that they have to say. They just don't know how to express themselves. So it's going to help take you to help crack that open. And, and we've got two brand new beginning cards here in reverse. So it's going to take... Um, it's going to take time between the two of you to kind of build that trust. Um, and, and there, because I feel like that's a blocked energy right now. Um, and it's just because they are, they're like a lone wolf type person and they, they operate on emotions rather than logic. So you're going to have to figure out how to deal with that. If you want to deal with that, to build that trust between them. So are they trustworthy? Can you trust them is more of like, they don't really trust you either. So it's, it's about bu actually building that trust. And it's going to be a little rocky to begin with, but I feel like this is, this is something where, um, the moon often, reminds me of kind of like the grass is greener on the other side but that's not true the grass is greener where you water it and there's going to need to be put some work into this relationship to build trust now is it something you want to do now that you know this do you want to put in the work that's the question it's going to take some work do you want to put in it because you're going to get out of it exactly what you put into it so there's going to that's what I have. So that's what I have for you, group three. I hope that you have an amazing day. Thank you so much for being here with me, and I will see you in the next reading. Hello, group four. We've got our lovely Druzy star, Druzy swirly star, our number four, and our panda deck. So we are going to ask five questions all around the um, theme of can you trust them? I'm going to get all five, at least five cards out, so one card per question out, and then we will read everything together. So the first question is, is what is the foundation of this relationship? And we get two cards out here. We get the four of pentacles and the ace of pentacles. Okay, so this might be more of a work-based relationship. What is this person's true intentions? What are their true intentions? We get justice. Um, what, why are you questioning? Why are you wondering if you can trust them? We get the seven of swords reversed. Um, what would happen if you begin to trust them? What would happen if you begin to trust them? The chariot. I like that. And then what is the potential future of this relationship? Potential future here. Potential, potential future. Seven of Cups. Ooh, very interesting. So it's interesting we've got these two sevens reversed. Um, and the seven of cups is kind of like this, this idea that we've got a lot, ton of wishes and we can have anything we want to, but this is interesting that we have it in reverse because that's like focusing in on something. So I was saying that the pentacles, this is kind of like, um, a monetary type of situation. I mean, obviously look at the pentacles, look, they look like money. Four of Pentacles and the Ace of Pentacles. Foundation of this relationship. Anytime we're talking about foundations and we get a four, I am happy because foundation is about security. It's about being built well. It is about being stable. And that's what fours are. Um, and then we've got the stability with money. Um, and then we've got the Ace of Pentacles here. I said, you know, this might be a work situation. It doesn't necessarily have to be. This could be a love reading. Um, which is good too. We've got cups here. Um, the uh, Ace of Pentacles is about creating, a, you know, as a lot of as a lot of potential. It's about creating a brand new beginning. Whether that is somebody that you want to have a business relationship partnership with, whether that is a new new job, new career opportunity, that you're, you know, this is your new boss potentially 
or whether that is, you know, somebody you want to have joint checking with and someday. This is very fruitful, this working together. We've got stability. We've got somebody who seems like they're trustworthy. They've got a good credit score when we get the four of pentacles. And then we've got the ace of pentacles. Um, the only thing I would be concerned about when we get the four of pentacles is this is somebody who sits on their money and they hold tight to it and they don't spend it. But then we have the ace of pentacles too. So um, it feels like there can be some balance around that. And then talking about balance, we've got judgment. What is this person's true intentions when I see, or justice, sorry. When I see justice, um, usually I'm thinking about the scales of justice, that balance, it's ruled by Libra. So I love that. I love this as the person's true intentions because this leads to like more stability. This means that they're they're coming to you with integrity. They mean well. They are they're even though this particular panda is kicking the other panda in the face. <laughs> um, but justice is blind. So actually like justice isn't blind, justice sees everything, but they don't see like they see the their logic behind it. They see the true intentions of it. So as long as we are, you are going into this with integrity, I feel like they are going into this with integrity. Um, I, the swords here, because justice carries a sword, uh, because we, you know, we do need to cut ties or whatever. Justice is willing to do that if it's not um, a, a situation built out of integrity. Then we get the Seven of Swords reverse. This reminds me, or this Seven of Swords is somebody who kind of sneaks around behind people's back, um, who are, is doing things for their own benefit. If we're doing a relationship reading, it can indicate cheating. But we have it in reverse here. And why are you questioning this? Probably because you've had a bad experience in the past, or they have had a bad experience in the past. The the reason I say it's in the past is one, it's reversed. And the other reason I say that is because the other cards are very lovely. If I had a bunch of other cards like the Three of Swords or the Tower card or things like that, I would say, ooh, you know, I'd, I would be concerned about possibly cheating here. But we've got Justice for them. This is a Major Arcana card. I don't feel like this is a person who does that. They've got Integrity. Okay, so um, if you are questioning this because, you know, your past relationship was bad, maybe your past boss was bad, if you're asking about your boss or other co-workers treated you bad in the past, they backstabbed you, things like that, um, this is not that person. So you need to re release those negative, release that, that negative thinking behind them. Don't project something onto them that's not there. We get the chariot. Uh, when this came out, I think I said, oh, I love that. This is what happens when you begin to build trust. The chariot usually has, it's movement, first of all. It's movement, it's, it's emotional movement as well. The chariot is ruled by cancer. And then usually we have like two sphinxes, two horses, two things that come together that pull that chariot. So in this, I'm seeing the two of you coming together and working together to, to move forward, to pull this to pull this relationship forward to um, become something bigger than than what you are so that's what i'm saying i love that and then the seven of cups reverse when we're doing a relationship reading i like to see cups cups is that emotional component between people the seven of cups talks about wishes having anything and everything that you could wish for or dream of it's this daydreaming it's fantasy it's having all of these potential things. Now, the Seven of Cups very much can represent being on a dating app or something like Tinder, where you're like, oh, you know, I don't, I forget, I don't know which way you swipe, you know, yes, 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 yes. And then you've got like these seven people out there and they all have amazing potential. But to really move forward with one of them or with your future goals, future dreams, you do have to focus on one. So that's why I like that the Seven of Cups comes in reverse because then it's narrowing down that field to the one person that you're focusing on and that you're moving forward and creating things with. So yes, I feel like this is a person that you can trust and don't project things onto them that are not there. 
Um, trust your own instincts, of course, but do not trust them because of something somebody else did or is it something that they're doing, okay? Don't punish them for somebody else's mistake. That's what I have for you, group four. I hope that you have an amazing day. Thanks so much for being here with me and I will see you in the next reading.